This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, how can I make a curved wind deflector using the Z Modeler brush as seen in the Modeling a Truck with Pixelator video? So this question is referring to this video here that we have posted on YouTube, and it's called Modeling a Truck with Pixelator in ZBrush 4R7. Now around the 320 mark through here, Pixelator comes through and he's going to model a wind deflector on the truck here. So the question is asking how did he do this and what features did he use using the Z Modeler brush? So if I go back to ZBrush here, you can see I just have a start of a cab shape here modeled with the Z Modeler brush. And we're gonna go through now and we're gonna create a quick wind deflector using the same process as Pixelator was using. So the first thing I want to make sure I have the Z Modeler brush selected. So I'm going to hit B on my keyboard, isolate by letter Z, and then click M. And now I should have the Z Modeler brush as my current brush. And the first thing he did was he made some geometry along the top here to establish that starting point for that wind deflector. So I have some edge loops here that I just went through and used the insert edge loop function, which is one of the default settings with the Z Modeler brush, and just added some edge loops across the top here. And this is done by just simply Clicking on an edge with the Z Modeler brush selected and then dragging and it's gonna create that loop for you. So now that I have this area of topology through here with this skinny rectangular shape, I'm just going to hold down Alt and I'm going to click and it's going to give me this temporary polygroup across those two polygons. Now with this temporary polygroup, I can now come through and just perform a simple Q-Mesh action. So if you perform this action by default, you're just gonna click and drag and it's going to give you this Q-Mesh property which is this advanced extrude function inside the Z Modeler tool. Now the QMesh action has some alternate functionality. So rather than just clicking and dragging, if I click and then hold down control, it's going to split that face off. So we're gonna make this windshield a separate piece here. So I'm just going to hold control using that QMesh action. And it's going to split that poly off or duplicate it to its own polygon here. And so now I have this happening to the top of my truck here. So now this is going to be my starting shape for this wind deflector. So right now, this is a single-sided polygon here. So if I rotate down like this, you're not gonna be able to see it. So I wanna give it some thickness too. So I'm gonna apply that same Q-Mesh action again by just simply clicking and dragging. And it's going to now give that polygon thickness and also make it watertight at the same time. So that single-sided face now has been extruded out with that Q-Mesh action and all the holes have been filled in. So now at this stage, Pixelator comes through and he starts giving this a curved shape. Well, if I just start dragging this out with the Q-Mesh action, you're going to notice it's not going to give me that curved shape. So he is using another function of the Z-Modeler brush through here to get a angle generated that's going to allow him to extrude back and get that curved surface. So if you hover over an edge here and then press spacebar, you go into the Z Modeler edge action menu, and we're gonna locate the extrude action here. And then with his extrude action, we're gonna make sure we have the target of edge selected, and then we're going to just keep it as a modifier of straight. So what this edge action is going to allow you to do, it's gonna allow you to come through and click on an edge and drag, and it's going to generate this triangular extrude like so. So this is the process in which Pixelator was using to start generating that curve on the wind deflector here. Now this extrude edge, if I zoom in here, you'll notice when you hover over this edge, you're going to get a highlight. So let me just make my brush size a little smaller here. So if I hover over this edge and I'm closer to the top face here, you're gonna see this edge is gonna highlight. And if I'm hovering over the edge and closer to this face here, you're gonna see this edge is going to highlight. Now this direction of where this highlighted edge is when you're hovering over the edge here, it's going to correspond to which way this edge is going to extrude. So if I have this one highlighted when I'm hovering over the edge, it's going to give me this kind of extrude. But then if I have this one highlighted when I'm hovering over an edge, it's going to give me this extrude. So that is how you can change your direction of how this edge is going to be extruded out when you form this extrude edge action. So Pixelator went through and he made sure he had this top one highlighted and then just dragged out on this edge here and got this shape like so. So that is the second part there for this function. Now since that process was done with that edge action inside the Z Modeler brush, my poly action is still the same Q-Mesh one. So now I come back through and use Q-Mesh to pull that out 
hover over this edge again, generate another taper like so, pull it out, hover over the edge again, generate another taper, and then pull it out as well. So now you can see I've generated that curved wind deflector really quick just using those two actions in the Z-Modeler brush. Now after he had this established, he went through and inserted some edge loops through here using the insert multi-edge loops. So we're gonna hover over an edge again, press spacebar to go to the Z-Modeler brush. I'm gonna select the insert action and then I'm gonna change my target to multiple edge loops. And this is going to allow me to come through and now generate multiple edge loops if I want to cross the surface here. So I just want to make sure I have this many edge loops established like this. So I just had it insert one edge loop through there. Now he's also gone through at this stage and he deforms it some to kind of give it more of a curved surface in the center. So I'm going to use the Q mesh action again along with that temporary poly group. So I'm going to hold down Alt. And I'm just going to tag all these faces through here. And then now I'm going to use the Q mesh action and instead of just dragging it out like normal or holding control to detach the face, I'm going to press shift. So I'm going to start dragging it out and then I'm going to hold shift and this is going to perform a move action along those faces there. You can see now I have this soft angle throughout that edge there. Now I come through and say insert another set of edge loops and then tag these guys and do that same process. So Q mesh and then hold shift and you're gonna start getting that rounded surface throughout that area there. Now after you have something like this, uh, he went through and he started Q meshing these polygons back here and then just added a slight taper to them like so to get a different effect on that windshield there. You can also come through and insert multi-edge loops around this area here to kind of round this out as well. So if I come across this edge here, and then I'm gonna hold spacebar to go back into the Z-Modeler edge action menu. I still have that insert option selected. I have multiple edge loops as the target. And I'm gonna change my elevation to interactive elevation. So now when I come across this and apply it, you're gonna see it's going to insert edge loops there. And it's also going to give me elevation, which is gonna allow me to soften that edge up too. So now you can see I have a nice soft rounded edge all around that windshield. So that is the process in which Pixelator was using to model that windshield in the modeling a truck with Pixelator in ZBrush 4R7. So if you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing.